Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's Monday, November 19th, 2012. I'm Darko and this is my website, ggnonline.com, on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 on my YouTube channels. Uh, I'd like to just thank publicly those people that uh, supported me recently with some donations. Um, uh, this is going to be the only video probably this week because uh, Thanksgiving. I'm going to be traveling and um, your donations will help me get to see my family and stuff like that. Uh, it's a decent trip, so I appreciate it very much. Um, I have a poll up here. What issue is important to you right now? Uh, it's kind of surprising, but it's a good it's a good surprise. The majority are saying spirituality, 52%, followed by 36% of the economy. Uh, this last one was kind of a joke that General Petraeus. It was actually kind of worrying at first because it was getting a lot of votes. Um, but it's at 23%, followed by politics at 28%. So... All right, so I'm ready to continue where I left off. United States is blocking a United Nations statement on Gaza, says Russia. Russia has accused the United States of trying to filibuster a UN Security Council statement on the conflict between Israel and Gaza. Also, 500 Egyptian activists enter Gaza with medical supplies. Unlike past Israeli attacks, Gaza blockade no longer complete. Though the Egyptian government's change in policy towards Israel's attack on the Gaza Strip has mostly been rhetorical, it says here the obligation of an elected government to avoid angering its own population too much has made a meaningful change on the ground. So see, that's what I was talking about. Uh, this um, this uh, puppet, uh, Morzai, who is a uh, Western proxy under the guise of what uh, Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood, being uh, you know a, a nice, good, pious Muslim, uh, is really a globalist. And uh, he's just doing whatever they tell him to do. But in order to do that and play that uh, that delusion off, he has to allow certain things like this happen because, you know, the people don't like Israel too much. <laughs> and uh, and he has to sit there and uh, act like he doesn't like him either, but he's going to keep accepting large amounts of cash coming from the United States and not attack Israel at all. So that's the, that's the reality of it. That's because while Egypt's government is mostly still just playing the role of facilitator, for ceasefire negotiations, civilians are taking a more proactive role, with 500 of them marching to Gaza today with medical supplies for the tiny enclave's overwhelmed hospital. So that's pretty good news. Uh, report says rockets fired from Egypt hit Israel. Two major Israeli newspapers are reporting that rockets fired from Egypt have hit Israel. So, you know, who knows? Maybe this is uh, some, you know, quote, Bedouins or terrorists in the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, or maybe it's just Israel firing... Um, a rocket at itself, or maybe it's the rebels from Syria that are all, all along the borders firing uh, rockets into Israel. Terrorists in the Sinai Peninsula launched rockets into Israel Friday night, says a Jerusalem Post. They fell near an Israeli village on the southern border, causing some damage but no injuries. Yeah, that's, that's one of the tactics that uh, these little um, uh, proxy armies of mercenaries and Islamists, Islamic extremists, um, like to do. Uh, they like to uh, fire. They like to go across the border. Say like um, in Syria, uh, and they'll go into Turkey. These rebels in Syria trying to uh, take out Assad. They'll go across. They'll get arms and munitions, literally from the backs of pickup trucks, from um, uh, um, basically being led by the Turkish government. Then they'll go back over the border. They'll fire mortar shells because that's who usually usually uses these mortar shells of these rebels. And mercenaries and terrorists, and they'll fire them back into Turkey. Uh, uh, maybe you know, damage some buildings, and maybe just maybe kill a few people, and then they'll say, "Oh, see, Assad's government, uh, you know, shells came in from Syria." So they like to do that game, and then they run back across the borders, recruit more people. Israel says rebels take Syrian frontier villages. So this is what I'm talking about. Syrian rebels have taken control of nearly all the villages near the frontier. With Israel held Golan Heights, according to Israel's defense minister, who said Assad's forces were displaying ever-diminishing efficiency, which is what, what the whole point of all this is. Israeli troops fire into Syria and kill three soldiers. Officials are unclear if rebels or regime gunfire prompted the attack, but it goes on and says there's more casualties reported at the Israeli frontier with Syria after soldiers in the occupied Golan Heights fired into Syria today, killing three soldiers. It was a response to small arms fire. Israel concedes that... Um, that they're not really sure who it was, but it goes on. It says the slain people, people appear to have been Syrian regime forces. Even it's the third border incident between Israel and Syria over the past few weeks after stray mortar shells exploded just across the border and Israel attacked Syrian art artillery shells. 
Like I said before, a nice tactic that the Zionists like to use is the Syrian rebels have accused Israel of aiding the Assad regime, although this appears unlikely. Uh, like I said, that, that uh, basically helps um, uh, create division among Assad's uh, people and his supporters to think, oh, he's a Zionist, oh, okay. Syrian rebels capture airports. So this is the stuff that's going on. It's not, I mean, yeah, it's in BBC and everything, but everything you see on the television, uh, you know, the average person, they're not going to be seeing this stuff, these uh, advancements that these terrorists um, are taking in Syria. Syrian rebels capture airport. This is a big deal, you know. Syrian rebels say they have captured an airport near the border with Iraq. The Syrian Observatory of Human Rights and Activist Network said the rebels now control large swaths of land. So these are the these are the signs that uh, the the tide could be turning, right? Um, just like Libya, when they were taking uh, military um, armories and they were taking airports and military bases, Syria rebels siege major military base near Turkish border. Reports: 15 tanks have been seized and several military officers captured. The rebel fighters have released video footage showing they have captured major military base just west of Aleppo, right there, along uh, the border with neighboring Turkey. Yeah, it says uh, the move adds another major possession to rebel holdings in the Syrian northwest with border crossings almost constantly contested with the hope of Western arms flowing in through Turkey. goes on, it says the area on the Turkish frontier is the largest concentrations uh, where the rebels have formed with Turkey openly backing some factions. It says here, Syrian rebels eye Assad's economic lifeline in the east. A Syrian rebel offensive that captured the border crossings with Turkey and Iraq aims to cut off supplies from the country's main grain and oil producing region so and speed Assad's downfall like I said regime change that's that's what it's about and almost my viewers are aware of that but just in case you're a new viewer you happen to stumble upon this and uh, you get most of your news from the television it's not about humanitarianism at all it's about business arms another call to arm the Syrian rebels after um, uh, what was it, the UK's Hague said that and uh, was it France and Europe and Turkey? They're all recognizing this new opposition government. Uh, give us arms to defend ourselves, says uh, this individual who is touring European capitals as a newly elected president of the Syrian coalition of opposition forces. So, yeah, you have the Islamic extremist rebel group rejecting new Syrian opposition coalition. The group of extremist uh, factions in Syria have rejected the country's new opposition coalition, saying in a video the statement that they have formed an Islamic State in the embattled city of Aleppo to underline that they want nothing to do with the Western-backed bloc. So that's pretty interesting. So I'm just going to put this out there, just going with, you know, as far as Libya, now everybody's still going down that rabbit hole and just uh, totally ignoring the obvious, which is, uh, you know, they should have just left Gaddafi in power. They should never intervene into a sovereign nation, which was more democratic than the United States, believe it or not, um, and many other Western countries. And the Gulf dictatorships, they're dictatorships, the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Bahrain, all of them, um, those are the ones who are actually funding um, all of these exo Islamic extremists. And in fact, they're actually starting to worry about it and possibly cutting ties with these people because they're starting to have a lot of power after the... Uh, Arab Spring, which, of course, was induced by uh, Western democracies in the Gulf states to get regime changes. So now we're going to have the same situation here in Syria. So when, when an ambassador gets uh, uh, hung or gets uh, killed or murdered or slain, and uh, and it's all over the news, and, and then you have all these people saying, well, if Romney was in office, this would have never happened. And and then you'll have Obama supporters saying, well, you, you got to, he's only had four years, you got to give him more time. And uh, you can just... Uh, uh, think back to Libya and say, well, you know, we shouldn't have been there, right? And this would have never happened. So it's not more more security that is the problem. It's that um, that you are bullying your way into another country, another country's business. And remember this, this kind of went under the radar from the 16th. I covered on Friday. Pentagon says 75,000 troops might be needed to seize Syria's chemical weapons. So they've actually already started to talk about this, how many troops they would need. British troops on Syria stand by. More than 1,000 Royal Marines could be sent to Syria as the conflict's humanitarian toll reaches crisis levels. So there you go, humanitarian toll. That's, of course, using civilians as pawns. And the more they die, the more douchebags like this uh, increase their business uh, street cred. Uh, U.S. senators call for a no-fly zone in Syria. U.S. senators are calling for a 
the West to establish a no-fly zone in Syria with a civil war. It's not a civil war, like I said. This is to sectarian violence between um, different sects of Islam. The West, most Westerners don't have no clue about that. Um, it also has to do with regime change. It's basically an invasion by a bunch of terrorists. They're backed by people like this, who, who use the word Al-Qaeda to scare people on Fox News. as red alert, red alert, red alert, and people, you can see them uh, mesmerized, right? Uh, by all of this uh, shock and awe uh, media. Yeah, and uh, John McCain, who I believe is like a millionaire, is, was just ashamed of the lack of response from the U.S. So, um, refugee children face winter at risk. Yeah, this is 200,000 and a quarter million Syrian refugee children are at serious risk from the freezing temperatures as the winter sets in the Middle East. So, yeah, it's going to be bad for these guys. It's already been a lot of unrest in the Jordan camps there. And it's only getting worse as the cold sets in. Food is scarce. And uh, they keep escalating this, like those douchebags, like I just pointed out, Haig and, um, and McCain. Uh, Syrian rebels clash with Kurdish militias on border with Turkey. So Syrian rebels fighting to help the regime change clash with armed Kurds near the Turkish border on Monday. So this could actually be pointing to why they are propping up uh, Kurdistan right now, exploiting the unraveling of Assad's grip in swaths of Syria. Kurds have been asserting control in parts of the Northeast, you know, bidding for self-rule and rights. So they could actually be playing this uh, and, you know, just squeezing Syria from all angles. And uh, like I said, uh, then they'll take the Kurds and they'll give them their own state and it'll be a puppet state. That mean I don't want to see Kurdistan and the Kurds have their own sovereign state? No, it just means that if they get their state, it's going to be a Zionist Western, um, uh, basically Gulf state backed country. And that's one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why Turkey is, uh, you know, all up in this. Besides, it's a border state and it's a NATO state and it's vying for itself, EU. Um, it's trying to get into the EU, basically. And so uh, there's uh, some articles I've covered where it says the majority of the buildup by Turkey uh, near, uh, near the Kurdish region and that is uh, not so much for Syria, but for the Kurds. Uh, the German Bundeswehr may monitor Turkish-Syrian border. I'm sorry if I butchered that. German troops take part in reported Turkish air defense system. It would represent the unit's first foreign deployment, originally intended to protect against the Soviet threat. It's, uh, the group is based in northern Germany. So Germans, Germany's next foreign military deployment may not be far off. The Turkey will reportedly request NATO's assistance in establishing an air defense system, and German units could be called on to participate. Move fast here, so stick with me, please. Iraqi troops and Kurdish forces on the verge of war. Um, so, yeah, it says in, lar in response to large numbers of Iraqi troops in Kirkuk, Kurdish military officials have dispatched thousands of forces to the province. That's right, they want their own military. Remember, I covered that. Iraq Kurds put sec uh, security forces on high alert, so now they're on high alert. Attributing the move to clashes with the several central government of Iraq. Then we have this, uh, top economic advisors forecast world war including this uh, Kyle Bass, uh, Faber, and Jim Rogers say trillions of debt will be restructured and millions of financially prudent savers will lose large percentage of their real purchasing power. It uh, says the world will not end, but the social fabric of the nations will be stretched. In some cases, looking back through history, all too often wars and manifestation of sickle, simple economic uh, entropy played to its logical conclusion. In other words, we believe that war is inevitable consequence of the current global economic situation, but it's not. It's because, what, they create war so that they can take on more debt. That was found out by Ezra Pound and, and Eustace Mullins, who wrote about the Federal Reserve. So the whole thing, when you hear this crap by, like, uh, people on the television talk to you about, like, Kramer, oh, well, you know, we need a war to get us out of this recession. Well, we're kind of in a depression, and the reason we get into them is because of debt. So we get into a war to take on more debt so that we can get rid of the old debt. Well, technically, the tax slave takes on the debt, but uh, the businesses, the military-industrial complex, and the sold-out politicians who work for them actually uh, win in the end, but you lose. Uh, talking about World War, five EU countries call for a new military structure, so the EU wants its own military. When we're talking about that, Venezuela is going to start modernizing their fleet by purchasing Chinese goods. Kim Jong-un of North Korea is trying to get control of his military. Well, the arms race is exploding as neighbors try to counter Russia's power and rise. Obama was odd man out trying to bully his way into South Southeast China's economy. China's currency moves closer to the global uh, reserve currency. 
Russia vows a tough response to U.S. legislation that will find, put sanctions on them if they find them responsible for violating human rights. It originated from the Soviet Union's treatment of Jews. The irony is that it was the Jewish Bolsheviks that murdered 66 million in Russia, mostly ethnic Russians and Christians. Thank you.